Hello everybody and welcome back to the LJL officially unofficial cast where we cover every single LJL game in the English speaking language. I am your host, Mars One, otherwise known as Alex in real life or Lexi by others as well because two Alexes make it difficult sometimes and I have a nickname so why not? I am of course hosting but that's all I really do. I no, nah, nah, that's an understatement. I do, I do no, so much. That's everything. <laughs> I do everything. I'm the master. I'm the puppeteer. But I am, of course, We're joined. We're actually here. We're just puppets. <laughs> just like he's controlling us. And well, he is I, Mattel. Am I like, uh, am I like Puppet Master Ganon from uh, Wind Waker? That's it. I, that's I was, it, I was, I was going for Metallica's Master of Puppets, that's famous so 1980s okay, Metal album. Okay, okay. Yeah. So I mean, both good, a good game, it's underrated pretty, game, yeah. but, and just a very good song and music video, actually. So. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I am of course joined by my play-by-play -play caster and my color commentator. I switched it around for this one. Uh, Nymera and Initialize, please, as always, introduce yourselves. Uh, um, Sam Initialize Hapkid, I'll be bringing the magic of play-by-play -play to you all today. And I'll be joined by my brother here. Yeah, I'm Alex Nymera. If you've heard it all before, maybe. And if you haven't, you should go watch our VODs and our podcast. Oof. So, yeah. Plug! Um, so plug! Plug, plug, plug. Yeah, no, so, yeah, the last game was pretty fun. DFM starting their stuff, really, just another day at the office, just kind of close things out with a really good draft, really good laning phase, and uh, Ebby showing he's still probably the best top laner in the LJL. Yeah, that was an early game carry performance from him. Absolutely destroyed the Mordekaiser's hope of being involved in that game. Level one, zoned him off the wave, dived him at level four to level two. Yeah. I think he just ticked level three, then found him and solo killed him in the jungle. Like So I can't wait to see what he does next game. Absolutely, and that next game is gonna be Rascal Jester versus Detonation Focus Me. Obviously, Detonation are on a three win streak now, looking very defiant yes. and kind of have played some of uh, one or uh, last week they played one of the better teams that we rated. Um, and now, obviously, they're playing another one of these better teams in the league with high expectations. Rascal Jester, though, on our podcast, plug number two, uh, we did, uh, I believe Sam put it as more of a, a comp that could potentially come mid to later in the split, could be a very scary team once they've worked out their team combination. So, where do you guys sit on this so far? Rascal Jester is one and one currently yeah. in the standing. So, interesting matchup, yeah. I think. Yeah, so Rascal Jester lost against Sengoku last week against their crazy composition of uh, Orn Kiana with a rumble support as well. It meant that basically they could never end up walking up onto the same screen and uh, expect to live. I think that was a hard drafting game for them, but then obviously in their second game they ended up winning, going 1-1 one -one versus mm. Crest Gaming, where they played the Soraka mid, seen it banned a couple of times, and Art just absolutely carried on an Ash going 6-0 and 15. So yeah, I think that if they can play a similar kind of backup art, play the bodyguards to that AD carry, <laughs> I'd like to see if they can win through the bot side of the map. Yeah, I've literally got Bodyguard, there. the film, the musical for it, going in my head. <laughs> Pretty good. Go ahead, Sam. Uh, yeah, I was just saying, like, Art and Vivid are two very tenured players with a lot of experience and a lot, at a particular high end of play, like they've been in semi-finals, I think. Was I want to say uh, Vivid was on DFM at some point. I think he was, yeah. Yeah, so like this is this guy yeah. has been playing with some of the best for a very long time, and Art was over on uh, V. No, it wasn't uh, V. Crest. He was on he was Crest on Gaming. He was on Crest Gaming. I did that last time no. as well. Oh, so like Art these are some Crest, of the better yeah. teams we've had over the last few years, and uh, he Cre could definitely do some good work yeah. if these, uh, this bot lane gets together and gets to do some damage. Art on Crest has made back-to-back semi-finals. Current, yeah, well, uh, the, playoffs. He's made playoffs. He's come second in the standings on Crest both times he was on. So this is a player who is very used to being top of the table. Yeah, and I think he's impressed me so far as an AD carry, right? His Ash performance was really fun in yes. that um, in, in that 6 0 15 game. And yeah, you know, like Vivid, as we said, has been around for ages. He was on DFM for two years between 2016 and 2018. This guy has played at the, on the, what, some of the better teams, better organizations that the LGL has to offer. Um, and, you know, he has been bringing that class to these first two games as well. So I'd love to see them pop off and show us what they have versus the Titans, which are DFM, in very good form, it seems. Yeah. Oh, yes. Made it to Worlds. So definitely uh, a pretty tenured player as... Uh... 
Sam yeah, was the word saying, we're using. <laughs> we're we're going to keep going with that. We're going to keep yeah. going with it. But it's yeah. out phrasing for it. You know, oh. eventually we're going to get to the point where people are going to say, "Oh, Kings of Europe, have you heard about tenured LJL players?" I'm like, "Yes, I have." We'll be like, that's "Ah, what we, that's what we say." That's what we did. We started this. <laughs> Anyway, with that in mind, I think it's about time that we get onto the rift and we go over to the pick and ban phase. And as tradition dictates, I will count us in as we are doing a slight blast yeah. from the past. So, Lest time travel happen. Absolutely. <laughs> so in three, two, one, good luck to both of the teams and have fun. Our watches and streams have been synchronized. We're in and getting ready to be casting this game of Detonation Focus Meet versus the Rascal Jesters. This is two of our older organizations in the league as well, so it's great to see these two tenured organizations. Oh, well. <laughs> you just, you, you really I did. That oh, thing, I did. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, no, there was no shame there. Uh, come into this draft. So let's run down some of these rosters for Rascal Jester. It's Cog Cog in the top lane, Hacha Mecha in the jungle, Ninja in the mid lane of X Renegades, TDK, and Envy uh, Fame. And of course, it's Art and Vivid in the bot lane. Yeah, and over on the other side of the rift, it is the indomitable Detonation Focus Me, currently 3-0. Evie in the top lane, Steel in the jungle, Cyrus in the mid lane, Utapon is as bot lane, and Gang as support. And the first two bands come in. Uh, it's the Heimerdinger targeted at Cyrus. Already played a game on that already. No one really likes playing against that pick in solo queue, or in competitive, it seems, against this guy. Nope. And uh, Soraka taken as well, as well, away as well. They saw Ninja play it yesterday, and it looked really good. So taking that off the board is definitely a sensible okay. choice, I feel. And this is the first Aatrox ban we've seen of the LGL. Ebi had a fantastic second game against that in, in week one. I believe that was against uh, Crest Gaming Act. And yeah, that was, even though Ray Farky had a very good gangplank and Ebi ended up going 0 2 in the early phases of that game, ended up just taking over team fights the later the game went. There was some brilliant skirmishes around that jungle for sure. And of course, Steel is still not getting his hand on that job. And that first day gave everybody the Cliff notes that Steel should just never, ever touch the Prince of Damasia. Yeah, I think that a lot of teams are realizing the tools which Jarvan has on the engage. I think the story of LJL drafting has been about how much engage can you draft while having a safe backline as well. And then people slowly starting to realize that they want to draft some disengaged involved with that as well. Set the last ban. Yeah. Normally a very safe first pick. In Rascal Jess's win there. Top laner Cog Cog had a great set game, but he has potentially picked up the Orn here. Of course, can be flex mid lane, but it's a strong first pick either way. Yeah, you know what I'd really like to see now? I'd really like to see Illusion or something like that into the Orn. Go on, Ebby. Yeah. yeah, and there's actually, you know what's very interesting? Akali and Syndra are not banned. You're absolutely right. That's worth them. As we speak about it, it's picked up here along with and the And Aphelios Aphelios. isn't banned either. That is what? horrific. Are you sure, Rascal Jester? I know Orn is a strong pick, but those are two terrifying carries well, to let through the draft. This is the thing, right? So I, I was, okay, so I briefly theorized over the last couple of days, how do you beat DFM's drafting strategy when you have to ban out stuff like Heimerdinger and uh, the Karma and stuff like that? Is that, well, maybe you just leave up the power picks and do a bit of a handshake on it. But you know, Syndra is still available. If they don't pick that in this round as well, they're picking the Rex Siphon out and they're picking the Nautilus as well. It looks like if that's locked in. Vivid I... is a good Nautilus, I can understand that. How <sighs> Metro has gone for an aggressive Rexide, but I always but, feel Rexide is lesser to but, lease in but, at the moment. But what's but what's stopping DFM locking in Syndra here and having the three Ooh, best carries uh, in absolutely. the game? Absolutely. Uh, we'll see what they're going for. They're debating it. They might want to think about saving something for a counter pick because it will oh, kind of. Yeah, it's just Gragas is a really strong pick because we don't want to have their jungler band out. I think Gragas is also a very good pick as well if they go towards that as well. Um, they're actually picking up the Trundle. So, the oh, reason they notice. are doing this is that we see three very tanky champions coming in from Rascal Jester, comparative to their role. Okay, Rexai doesn't really count as that, but Nautilus and Orn, both very cha tanky champions. You stick down the Subjugate, Trundle's ultimate onto them, and it means that the likes of Akali and Aphelios can just shred them. So we'll yeah. see what ends up getting banned here. Misfortune, the S tier AD carry taken away from Rascal Jester. And I wonder whether we might see a... Senna ban as well, just to take out that last of the S tier AD carries, and we'll see what's going on. That's a Leona ban away. Don't want to have to deal with that. Uh, so Nautilus will be kind of not free against the uh, other engaged support, major engaged support. I suppose. Yeah, we'll Still see. A fresh yeah, available, yeah. We'll, we'll we'll see if they want to ban away something like the LeBlanc as well. Actually, that is the ban coming through. It is kind of a good blind pick into the Akali, and uh, yeah, won't be available for the side of Rascal Jester now. And we saw Ramone have a great game into Akali on the LeBlanc. Uh, and that kind of, you know, with the ability to distort forward, throw the chain, and reveal Akali within her shroud, yeah. 
can be quite dangerous. Okay, and especially and... the Brom band out, I'm kind of a bit surprised there because it does mean that Syndra is still available right the way through to the fourth pick for Detonation Focus Me. This is actually befuddling and for well me. look at that Seros <laughs> gets his hands on Syndra it looks like I'm um, hearing my producer in my ears also being I... completely befuddled all of us here a little bit concerned by Rascal Jester's drafting here yeah I, they, I, I, genuinely... I understand it but they have given no, away I, no, a Felios no. Akali Syndra <laughs> nah no, they have given away literally the three best carry champions in League of Legends right now from the competitive scene. Uh, I, I think there are good laning matchups into Syndra, but Syndra being able to be kind of a CC bot as well as a good burst and sustained damage champion from that mid lane or the bot lane, although this time it will be the Aphelios in the bot lane, so it will be Osiris piloting the Syndra. And it's the Varus picked up as the AD carry. It does give a little bit extra engage options towards the side of Rascal Jester. But um, at, at least they have given themselves engage options. Orn, as we've been saying, is the premier tank in League of Legends. But when you talk about the Trund Trundle on the other side, it does reduce the impact of that. Yeah, and Varus was one of those staples from 2019. Definitely something Art knows how to play well. A lot of long-range poke, potentially able to deal with a Velios in his sometimes quite extended range as well. But it's a Cassiopeia locked in last... We'll see how that goes. Ninja deciding he's going to take that probably so, mid lane. I mean, we have seen the occasional Cassio top, I suppose. Uh, I don't think that'll be the case this, this game. I don't think that Cassio is particularly good versus Akali because you have a lot of point and click damage from your twin fangs. Putting down the shroud means that that really doesn't happen. Hovering, oh, a, couple of, uh, hovering a couple of strange things. We'll, we'll wait until it's uh, locked in for certain. And Man is, of the fifth age! Gems are time. here and they are hey. fabulous. And you know what? I actually really like this because when you start channeling the call of the forge god for your initial engage character immediately replies with his ultimate and it does stump the engage of rascal jester although that's the way it's supposed to play out of course we'll see how this goes it means they've got a fairly tanky front line of course you can with the dazzle if you attach that to akali as she goes dashing forwards with her oh, well. and flip. <laughs> you can do some pretty cool little combos i'll be looking forward to it um but you're right, that invulnerability will be quite nice. And it means that as they come engage, come to engage, some of these carries might last a bit longer. And there are three S-tier carries on the side of DFM. Yeah. I am a little nervous about Rascal Jester's draft there. I am, yeah. Because I think the Sakali, if she gets ahead in this game, will be able to just push into side lanes with impunity and then find flanks into the fight, make that uh, Varus and the Cassiopeia feel pretty bad about their situation and their positioning. Uh, but at DFM, so we've been talking about drafting the LGL in terms of how you draft engage and draft against and disengage. They do have the Trundle pillar for a little bit of situational disengage. And we'll see actually whether Trundle can interrupt the Orn ultimate using the Trundle pillar. That's an interaction which we occasionally See. But besides that, we're really looking for opportunistic Syndra stuns and, of course, the Graviton ultimate out of Aphelios for the side of Detonation Focus Me. Okay. So I'm seeing a big 5v5 comp from Rascal Jester here. A lot of yeah. tanky engage with some DPS from Avaris and a Cassiopeia versus probably what's going to be a full one split with a Kali off in one a side lane, maybe coming in for a teleport, and then the, the Trundle and the Tarek there to keep the four safe. Yeah, I think I can agree with that. Uh, I, I I think this game is going to come down a lot about how people end up positioning around objectives once again, as we've been talking about a little bit in the LGL. Um, a lot of how the LGL chooses to fight, as we see this uh, interesting man shouting out at us again, but we have the, the, the stream muted when we're doing this. You can hear our lovely voices. Uh, but yeah, so what we're looking for is uh, how these teams play around objectives and set up for objectives. That's how the LGL teams tend to fight. They tend to say, hey, we'll fight around uh, our laning phase, but then really it is, let's wait until Dragon or Herald. Yeah. Game on. Grab yourself a drink, sit down. This is the LJL's match of the week, and I can understand it. These are two of the most storied organizations <coughs> in the league, and these are some pretty explosive drafts. I'm looking forward to see how this goes. Of course, we've given our thoughts. We think DFM probably came out on top of this. Um, but it's not like Rascal Jester have got no tools at their disposal. Yeah, and you know what's actually very interesting um, on the side of DFM is that so Steel has always been a Trundle player. Trundle was actually buffed a little bit over the over the off season. Did have a little bit of extra slow onto the pillar and a little bit of extra move speed when he's walking around his uh, frozen domain. So just a little bit of uh, extra disruption and movement from that Trundle get himself into position a bit quicker. We've had a lot of sort of like kings and sovereigns over the last couple of games. He had the Mordecai's, of course, Iron Revenant, ex old king around Noxus. We had Mord, not Morgan, we had Carthus, Master of Death. We had, I don't think he was. Of course, the law has changed so much, and I'll get like I won't get on a law conversation. I have my 
strong feelings about League of Legends lore and how it so what you're pertains saying or doesn't pertain to the Rift anymore. So what you're saying, uh, there are a lot of kings here? Are we like the king, uh, kings of the LGL? Yeah, that, yes. Yes, we are. And it's the Siren Cassio Pierce skin. That is a man of culture. Great skin. Fan of that one. Yeah, I'm actually a big fan of the, uh, the what's the Hellenism one? You know, the oh, one which is kind of like the mythic one. Yeah, I actually quite like mythic Cassio Pierce. Although the Eternum one has some really cool sound effects on it. Yeah. I was going to say, of course, we've got the Troll King as well to finish up the King conversation. Now we can move back on. Sure, cool, nice. Skin, cool. You did it. I did, lovely. I did. I thought it was really clean. That was, that was yeah. a nice bit of sort of like smooth, elegant conversation now that yeah. wasn't at all forced. <laughs> so in terms of the rune choices this game, just moving over to something a little bit more game-centric. <laughs> uh, what do you so mean? We, Skins yeah, are definitely so, so game-centric. We see, we see uh, instead of the press the attack that we sometimes see on to the FLS, we see the Conqueror instead, mainly because there's quite a lot of tanks to deal with on the side of Rascal Jester. We do see the Conqueror coming out of the Akali, slightly more common. No spellbook this time, like uh, Pyrian showed us in their game one loss in week one. Uh, what The interesting one for me, though, is that we see the Predator on the Trundle. Sometimes we see the Conqueror there, but still really, really good at his pathing, and it means that the Predator, when popped, allows him to be in position so much quicker. It's an early shove from all of DFM players, and an early level two for Evie in the top side, who managed to zone Cog Cog off the wave a little bit. Not as severely as he did in the yeah. previous <laughs> game but it is an advantage there 16 cs up to 17 now and uh cog, cog trying desperately to farm a tower not to fantastic cs oh sorry, success <laughs> so far uh i don't want to shorten that one that's a nice little dark sphere there as seros continues to trade in the mid lane um and that's getting a little bit ugly around some of these waves trundle going to be able to yeah. Take his pick of the Scuttle Crabs, goes towards this top side and his Cinder and Akali, probably for yeah, good Yeah, and as we see here, DFM have three pushing lanes in this early game. The bot lane winning out pretty nicely with this Tarek as well. Tarek has actually used to be pretty good into a lot of melee matchups, suffered a lot of nerfs after his initial rework, though. So uh, I'm not entirely sure on his overall power level, but for the composition, I think that the ultimate is pretty powerful. Of course, Stun Lance nice little stun there, but Hachimecha is here oh, as well, and Saros is around the wrong side. He's got to get it off this. Knows that probably with the way that Ninja was trading back there, that Hachimecha was around. Oh, Nearly lands Dazzle, but not quite going, having to back away now. Gets oh, Dreadside, he's in trouble. He's going to walk away, though, and actually we're looking at Utapon trading back pretty well. The heal from Gaing does allow him to come back to at least some health parity, but that wasn't the best trade. Yeah, we see the true damage Kali's going there. Ooh, Ooh, good E landing. Wow, that's some nice damage there from Ebi, who is <laughs> showing why now. this pick is permabanned. Yeah, good trade back from Cogcog, though. Tower shot along the brittle proc gets uh, Ebi just below half HP there. Uh, Orn does have a lot of damage in his kit nowadays. He does. Uh, always has done. I've always considered him something of the tank assassin. Uh, yeah, um, you know when we talk about uh, in League of Legends, there are champions which have a primary role and a secondary role. You know, like Syndra is a mage, but then also an assassin on the side. Then you have like some people who are supports, who are enchanters and and fighters as well, or something like that. Um, and you to be careful. You spawn is now backed up. He's going to have to flash. You think? Here oh, comes dear. Steel, though. Maybe it was a bait. Nope, he's just dead. He, that was yeah. bad. That's pretty sad. He walks up without uh, the wa without the wave there to block the minions, uh, b block the hook rather. He and, uh, well, he knew he had steel in the river. Maybe it was a bait because you could see him immediately pathing that way. But oh, well, I, even if it was, that was just really badly done. Yeah, it was sad, and it means that he dies, loses both of his summoners. Steel actually popped the. Uh, he, I think he he didn't actually pop the predator down there, but he was on that side of the map trying to clean up for his AD carry. Didn't end up working out. And now actually we see a just probably on about a 10 CS lead coming up for this bot lane as well. Probably more like five actually. I can't count. But <laughs> either way, that was pretty suspect from Utapon, and it's a nice easy pickup by Vivid onto who's X laning support. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit sad for Utapon there, obviously, was, uh, has been set up to succeed, succeed with this Aphelios, everyone really liking to pick up that champion right now, very strong in this current meta. Yeah, indeed, uh, Ebi brought himself up to about a 10 CS lead up in this top side, Steel, however, is back down around this bot lane, uh, that's a dazzle oh, onto Vivid, but I don't think it's gonna be, see, well, be a great choice, because he's still pretty tanky, throws a shield up, and that's that, but... Looking at Steel yeah. in this jungle, so is Hachimecha though, and he's got to level up on Steel with the extra camp he's picked up. So we have this, that's another oh. route now, and Vivid misses the dredge side. It's all looking a bit problematic, has to flash, but Hachimecha is here, slowed down by Trundle there. Yeah, Vivid walks up, uh, the hook goes uh, pretty much behind him, tries to go connect to terrain, but just not landing there. Does get himself the aftershock, which gives him a little bit of tank stats just to survive that trade. Does have to blow the flash though for that misplay. Yeah, Carly finally takes her first back, picks up the Hextech Revolver, uh -huh. some wards, and it's going to be right back up into that top side. It is, however, an Ocean Drake start for DFM over on the bot side. Hatchimecha is here, does have the level advantage, but 
looking around here. This is going to be currently uncontested. Vivid had had to back out versus his health bar Seriously, being so low. Uh, so is Ninja. This is going to be a bit of a trade. We're looking at a trade chain now oh. on to Hatchmatch, who's been stunned, but the drag is going to be, um, going to be a smite fight, and we see who gets it. It's going to, it's be, going to be the Rek'Sai. That's a great pickup, and now a fight, but that's oh, a lot good. of damage from the petrifying gaze from Cassiopeia, and that's a kill onto Seros. DFM, what were you doing? Yeah, so actually Hatchimatch went in there with the level advantage. They didn't manage to close down that wreck side before the dragon went down. Uh, well, but yeah, well, before they wanted to kill the dragon, should I say. And then the fight just really turns around after the Nautilus lands some CC. The Cassiopeia with actually a three-man petrifying gaze. They're getting a lot of slows down, although no stuns. Does end up in a kill for Rascal Jester at the end of that. Yes, it does, and that will also even out the slight CS lead that Seros had, but DFM now with a couple of slightly suspect plays on the bot side, even if they had been CSing pretty well. Ebby, on the other hand, has built up a very big CS lead. Cold Cold could roam down mid to ensure he was around yeah, and for actually, a quarter before And actually, start. Seros had built up a pretty big CS lead in the mid lane just before that fight came through. We just see Ninja out of mana there, but... Yes, but Hachimech is here, so Seros has to be really careful, but Seros has flash. Yeah, so I think in that last fight, I think Siros really didn't manage to find a position to be the initial CC for his team. With that scatter of the week, didn't end up landing there onto Hatchmecher and they're getting closed down. But at least he didn't blow his flash in that fight. At least he still has that available for him as a defensive or aggressive tool. Yeah, so it's a good start for Rascal Jess to uh, caught DFM being Napping. a bit greedy <laughs> in a couple of positions. And that has been DFM's problem, right? The way they have started quite strong, they've been punished for cocky aggressive positioning and rascal jester with some sort of well taking advantage of that really yeah and i don't think that steel's managed to deal do do too much on this trundle so far ebby just kept trading well into cogsog but that's a nice bet. that's a nice charge there to ensure that ebby is dragged under tower for a tower shot yeah, and actually Ebby working himself up to a good CS lead, as we've been saying. Yeah, this Akali works so well into uh, so many different kinds of champions. Obviously has the burst to deal with your squishier backline. It's the stuff like the Syndra, as we see in the mid lane, on his own team. But also well into the tanks when you take the Conqueror, just because you can passive cycle with your Q, give your Shroud, uh, put your Shroud down for a bit more move speed, allows you to trigger that passive a little bit more easily. Gives you just so much sustain damage, particularly after your Gunblade has been uh, built as well. Gives you some more sustain through those trades. We are seeing Hatchimacha tick six and head straight to the Rift Herald there. So that's probably going to be secured up there. So it's been a great early start for this jungler. Yeah, Hatchimacha almost on his way to the Warrior Enchant. They're not there yet. That's when your real power spike as these uh, AD junglers comes in. We'll see which lane they want to put the Herald down into. Has obviously secured that just now. Saros is going to have to be a bit careful, but there's oh, a trade on the, the top side as well. And that was some nice stuff. And that's a great Shuriken flip. Now, Cog in trouble. The old oh, down, he's going to be dead. He's got it there. He's going to fly now. Look at this. Cog is going to get solo killed oh. by Ebby. That's another fantastic start to the game from him. Yeah, the Orn just pushes up a little bit too far. And Cog Cog is punished. Fantastic damage coming out of Ebby. Does flash to secure that kill. Trade and flash actually at the end of the day. But yes, fantastic kill for Ebby. Now up to just about a 20 CS lead. Gets to push in for some plates as well. No teleport available for the Orm. Won't be able to collect the wave. This is very well played from Ebby and a fantastic map state for him too. All right, Steel is six. He's down bot side. Hachimecha is on his Krugs. He's down here in six. Let's see. I'm thinking we're about to see a bit of a fight here. Guy Alka, Alka has Alka. got his invulnerability. He's here and ready to throw down Hachimecha's that. here too. So we'll see how this goes. Gangs in the bush, Vivid's in the bush. This is going to be something. Looks like Sir yeah, Syros is actually backing off. Here we go, Gangs walking forward, forward, and that's going to be a Dazzle now in here. And here is this. Look down here, it's invulnerability. It's a teleport coming in from, I want to say, Seros. And he's going to be here as well. Hachimech is stuck in the background, oh. but he's got a lot of damage. Doesn't get the execute, though. And that means that Steel kills Hachimech. Vivid's been stunned as well. And this is all going really wrong for Rascal Jester. But Ninja has roamed down the wave. But look at that. So much oh, damage so from down. the Crescendo. And now Utapon saying, Yeah, Ninja, bring it. I will trade you 1v1. You can stun me if you want, but I have Crescendo. And I have so many Chakram stacked. Yeah, so it's Utapon flashing forward, also using the heal in that trade as well. So many summoners burnt from both sides. It does end up in a one for one for none for the side of DFM though. And they also get themselves some tasty plates. I think it was a two for O actually because Hachimachi went down, so did Vivid. Oh true, sorry, you're right. Yes, it is now two to three in the kill score for DFM. And yeah, so actually now at this point DFM, they're opening their own little crockery shop. Got a lot of plates on sale. Taking down a lot of those bot lane tower plates for the Aphelios. Gonna get himself a lot of gold from that. Let's look so, at this one more time. So basically Tarek commits all of his cooldowns in the early part of this fight here. But the Varus ult lands and there's a triple 
route coming through from there at the end of it, which does end up buying Art and Vivid a lot of space to at least try and trade back, but it just is, the damage just isn't there yet from Art, and Vivid, although he has the stopwatch, doesn't have the flash to get out of the way, the long, uh, the, the rifle on the turret as well, having a lot of, uh, utility for Utapon to follow up for a lot of autos onto Vivid to finish off that kill. Yeah, and let's also, like, call that out. That was a nice heel bait from Utapon as the Rek'Sai came through for the execute, but also completely missed the Moonlight Vigil in that fight yeah, and still fortunate. picked up two kills to day <laughs> FM. So that says a lot about the damage at yeah, this point. Yeah, like in these kind of fights, there are just so many skill shots flying everywhere. You just kind of have to prioritize which ones you talk about. I was like, oh, yeah, uh, the Fellow Assault, that's kind of important, right? You would think so, but Rascal Jester have managed to claim, uh, well, start up this second Rake, and that's going to be at least something for them. Uh, Ebby is still shoving in that well, top side, is really close to being a very scary Akali with the Gunblade. Well, the Mandrake's pretty good, right? Because you have a Nautilus and you've got an Orn, two very tanky yeah, champions which actually make use of the Mandrake. It's much more useful than on the side of DFM, even though uh, you do have a Trundle for the side of DFM. I think that this Orn will be really liking those tank stats, particularly because you are against the Akali who will want to be dealing large amounts of damage to you. Yeah, and uh, Saros is back to his CS winning ways in the mid lane. It's up about 20 yeah. there. Probably worth talking about where the gold lead is at. It's actually from being an early gold lead for Rascal Chess has been switched around partly by that solo kill, partly by the plates and the kills now in that bot side. Uh, it's now about 20k oh, to 19k. Stun. That's a good stun onto Hachimacha, who's oh. going to have to run out of his own jungle here. Yeah, and I have to say, I want to praise Ciros actually for that last play because it, right before the play started, you could see him backing off under tower B, just being aware that a play could happen bot lane as Gaiang walked up for the Tarek stun and then ends up teleporting in, getting the first amounts of damage down before Ninja, who arrives at the end of that fight, not really managing to impact it at all. So well played from Ciros and good presence of mind to affect that play. And we watched Cog Cog standing behind his tower and waiting for the waves to come through. Oh, Ninja. Ninja is now trapped, has got flash, has got cleanse, and that's going to be the end of that. He's going to get stunned here. There's a slow. Yeah, there's a stun. Is he going to throw? Oh, he has stunned. got to throw the throw the cleanse, but it was a good petrifying gaze. But Ninja's here and he's got so, oh, so much close. damage from that. Unleashed power, and that's why you have your potions. Inches. That is why you have your potions sticking, folks. Gets out with just about a hundred HP. Very, very close. Uh, Ebby's what Ebby's here. has got the Shuriken flip. He's got his ultimate as well. Ninja being forced way away and can't back yet. But now Vivid and Art caught by a trundle pillar. Art has to flash over. That was clean positioning from Steel, and it's going to be the end of that. Hachimachi is there too. Yeah, and this is why trundle pillar. Ebby's in the red side, about to farm. <laughs> about he was, to farm. Um, he was looking Raptors. to see if he could pick off the the low Cassia here. Doesn't end up finding them, however, and uh, yeah, Ninja just managing to back just by the Krugs, having to go the long way home. Uh, yep. We'll trade some CS to the top side for a wave now going into tower that he's not going to be able to collect, but Utapan and Gang will take first turret in this bot side after another nice gank from Steel forced out the flash. Yeah, and, and Trundle, while is not, he isn't the best engaged slash ganking champion, does have a way of dealing with these immobile, no dash AD carries and mid laners, as we saw there. The pillar putting uh, putting an extra bit of terrain for the Cassiopeia first, and then the Varus having to walk around. It forces out the flash and the cleanse from the mid laner and the bot laner for Rascal Jester. We see Cirrusta taking taking his pet blue buff for a walk there with the, uh, the uh, W there, being able to abduct that poor camp. Indeed he did, and we're looking now at uh, still a major CS leader with a Gunblade complete now for this Akali. Uh, that's, well, not good news for Rascal Jester. <sighs> Ebby has been playing really well over the, la the course of the first few games of this split. And Rift Herald has sub been summoned one more time, and DFM aren't feeling like giving up more objectives to Rascal Jester, but it's going to be a 2v2 here. Oh, Hachimacha does Hachimacha. get stunned by the Scatter the Weak Dark, Sph Dark Sphere combo, though, from Zeros. Yeah, and it does look like the Herald is the next, uh, the next, you know, the next title fight card. It <laughs> is, but the bot lane from DFM is here, uh, but so is the entirety of Rascal Jester. They really want this objective. It will be a 4v5, but Vivid is now caught a little bit here. Uh, Ebby is getting ready to teleport, but yeah, there comes the teleport into the back of the pit, no less. Steel is here, can't get onto this. It's going to be stolen! Too early on a smite there, and it's picked up by Steel, who's going to get knocked up by that call of the Forge God, though. He's going to have to flash over the wall, but Ebby's there. He's kind of stuck in the shroud. Goes for the oh. execute and gets it before the the uh, Rexi R goes through, and now that was beautiful stuff from Ebby, and that's going to be a one oh, for none, lands. and Kelcog is so much trouble. Steel is doing um, oh, a lot so of work nice. with that uh, pillar, and actually that was a Felios with the Crescendum as well, getting a lot 
lot of auto attack work done. Yeah, close run stuff from Ebi there. Gets a lot of CC put down onto him, but still manages to finish off uh, Hachimecha before the Rexai ultimate comes through. Like well, they're going to keep going. Stop these trying backs. To stop some backs there, like you're saying. I think they will manage to get through as they do want but to uh, summon the Rift Herald, Herald mid lane. Yes. So a good swing from DFM, who have exploded up to about a two and a half k lead, which will soon go up even further because this Herald will take down the mid lane turret. Yeah, stopping the backs there meant that the mid there was no way for Rascal Jester to defend the mid lane. And that means DFM now shoot up to about a 4k gold lead. Let's look at this replay one more time. Teleport comes in from everybody in the back of the pit. Yeah, so Steel actually standing on the poison here, taking a lot of damage from the Twin Fangs, but it really just doesn't matter. Puts down the Subjugate onto the Rex side, meaning that Hatchimacha cannot be a front line for this part of the fight. Good on ultimate into knockup from uh, the Rex side, and the Varisol also landing, but the Shroud goes down from Evie, means that none of those auto attacks can land onto that Akali. All the while, the fight is going well for DFM on the other side of the fight as well. Well, because Tarek just bring up, you know, good ultimate usage, good stun usage. And, but uh, uh, never mind that, we're about to start for another fight because the Cloud Drake has spawned, and that means there's going to be more people, more fights, more everything, and Ebi is now th is three levels up on Hatch and Magic and looking to repeat the, the kill. Though. Yeah, but he's over the wall and is looking to get into the back line here. It's not that far if they can stall for 20-odd, 20 20-odd, 20, well, 20 20 <laughs> 20-odd seconds is what we're saying. I was about to say minutes, and I was thinking that would be a really long yeah, cooldown so for Akalia. The Jesters are probably waiting for the Orn ult to be available, and likewise the FM are waiting for the Akali ult to be available as well. Akali finds it very hard to team fight without that ultimate available and it is quite a long cooldown what well, okay so rascal jester still positioning around this posturing around this looking for their third drake it looks like the fight might be starting here yeah we've got a nice little stun and tr uh trundle pillar down for some slows ebby's in behind they're kind of sandwiched the rascal jester the drake is still going on gang is taking air, uh, air drake attacks but Vivid and Rascal Jester now stepping forward and they're going to restart this Drake. No, just clearing up the control ward rather. Um, we're oh, going to see that's Varisol. a good Varazol in and Steel is now caught. He's got the subject oh, down. He's, he's just dead. before he goes through, but Ebby's found his way onto Art and Art is now in trouble. And now he's caught on his shroud though. He's taking an ignite. Going to have to get out. Has the perfect execution out of danger. And that's a nice pickup for Rascal Jester who gets Steel oh, who was too far forward. But Utapod is fired. A moonlight visual that hits everybody. And that's a lot of damage and that's a load oh. of crescendum hits now. And suddenly Rascal Jester's health bars are all so low. And Hachimetra is stuck with the unleashed power in this pit. It's going to get detonated by Seros. And Art is now dead. So is the oh, Cassiopeia, so over. is the Nar, and so is this Varus. It's Cog Cog running away, but Ebi is here. The stun is here. This Orn is not long for the world. Yeah, and a fantastic fight for DFM as they just clean up Cog Cog here. Run, little Orn, run. There's nothing to oh, save you boy. here. No one to save you now. And Cyrus with a fantastic fight. DFM with a fantastic fight. Get themselves the dragon, get themselves a whole five kills for none, and they get themselves control of the game. Yeah, two not one on this Akali now. Three one and one for both the uh, mid okay, mid. So right here, ABC. okay, just going into the replay, we see that Steel here is posturing. He does have the ultimate available to him, but the CC lands, and then also with the brittle procs being applied, he really just doesn't have the resist yet to tank up both the Varus and the Cassiopeia when he's rooted in place. Ebby buys a lot of time to just zone out the team of Rascal Jester, and it allows Utapon to stack up so many chakrams and then fire off his uh, Moonlight Visual. Gets a good amount of damage down especially onto Vivid means that this Nautilus isn't really there and available to apply any more CC. Hatcher Mecha caught out with Saras at the back. That is a really, really good combo from Utapon. Getting the double kill there. Saros flashing over to secure the last kill besides Cog Cog as well. And then as we saw, there's nothing really that the Orn can do in a 1v5 situation after that point. Yeah, and that means it is now a still a 4.5k gold lead because I feel that uh, we're looking at... Well, I thought it was going to be a little bit more than that, but it means the Drake's been secured, and it means there's a lot of summoners not available across the board for various well, the people. Thing, the th so while you do get yourself a lot of kills, you do lose some farm when you're... Um... Uh, you lose yourself some farm when you're going for those big objective fights as well. Perhaps they just had to, they missed out a little bit on the side lanes. Or maybe we just misread the gold totals earlier. Always, any, always any quite possible. Always quite possible. Uh, but we're looking at a couple of important item completions. That's a GLP and an Oblivion Orb. There's a Gunblade, as we talked about, alongside the Haunting oh, Guys. Yeah, Cirrus is horrifying. Uh, that is right a, 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 a Zeal. That's the one I'm looking for, <laughs> along with an Essence Reaver for the Aphelios. But Blade of the Ring King nearly stacked uh, uh, the, 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 the Rower. 
That's the one for Cassiopeia. And the Abyssal Mask upgrade in for Orn as well, who is going to be quite strong. Yeah, well, as we saw there, it did actually take a while for Cogog to die after that fight completed. And his ultimate does bring a lot of damage. He doesn't need to build himself any of those damage items really to have an impact on these fights. And the, the thing I, the thing which Rascal Jeffs are going to continually find a problem now is that Hatcher Metro is going to find it really hard to survive in these team fights. We saw that even without the subjugate put, being put down, Hatcher Metro is a level up on steel, admittedly, but just is not tanky to the face of this backline, this bursty team comp from DFM. Yes, and of course, this Rex, I have to quite a good early start in terms of being able to claim a lot of objectives, get the level six first, is now kind of falling away in this mid game. Of course, junglers are known to do that anyway, but Rek'Sai is kind of suffering a little more than most, even with, especially with this Hail of Blades build, which is so early game focused. It is, yeah, although I think that the Conqueror on Rek'Sai really only worked when you could uh, farm up to some nice damage items yourself. Doesn't really happen with the, the less gold income from the jungler this season. Indeed, and of course, we're looking at Tarek, of course, which has hit Quite happily level 10, didn't get punished super hard in the, the laning phase, and that means that ultimate higher, for Tarek yeah. is so yeah, available. Gang is actually higher XP than Steel right now, which is a little bit sad to watch, but yeah. Still, <laughs> yes. still, still, still with the pillar and the subjugate, still pretty useful in these team fights, as we were saying. Yeah, and we're going to see where this game continues. We're hitting a bit of a stalled out point, but of course, Baron has spawned. The Cloud Drake will be spawning again in about a minute 30, and we'll see whether that's the kind of catalyst for another fight. Yeah, maybe. I think that, um, well, obviously now that Rascal Jester don't have that third dragon available to them, if they did have that, perhaps they would be fighting a bit more tooth and nail around the map, trying to get themselves, wrangle themselves, some control for the next minute when the Cloud Drake will spawn. We do see the fully stacked Roa and the Seraphs now completed for the Cassiopeia, who is now ready to fight, you have to imagine. Has a lot of damage available to her on the snack. Indeed. No boots, but no does boots. have all the staffs available to cause yep. mad damage in these team fights. Yep. It's over about 60, well, 50 CS down on this Syndra as the opposition. That's another stun, but that's well buffered by Cog Cog and the Bellows Breath to avoid being CC'd. But uh, how you imagine a big force out of this jungle again? Look at all those tunnels in your jungle mean very little when DFM can just walk up a three member. Steel very nearly cancelling the tunnel there, which would have probably led to a flash blown by the Rex side, just showing that the annoyance that this trundle can bring. But, yeah, you know, not just for your own team as your recalls are stopped by the trundle pillar. It is to the other team as well, trust me. As we do see, you actually, the Baron started up here. Of course, you can stop your own team's recalls. That's just so irritating. Yeah, you yeah, the Baron has started, and the chakrams are available now for you to bomb, which means that this is a lot of very quick DPS. Uh, DFM Ebby, DFM Gang, just in this corner. There's a teleport coming into the blue buff. See whether they're going to contest. They're just going to back away, having burned the, the yep. teleport. So this is one of the the primary rules of the Baron dance. You just want to force it and bait out the Baron, just to force out some TPs. Gives you a little bit of extra map pressure to work with. Now that teleport is gone, Lazen. To walk down towards the lesser objective of the cloud drake and take that for themselves a little easier to contest for and they're going to take this one without much contest uh hatchimecha and cogcog are on the bot side but they don't want to go anywhere near this dfm squad which has now rumbled yeah, and, them in a couple and, team fights and actually as i was saying earlier in the game the akali ultimate is actually a very long cooldown now having two cloud drakes with that extra 20 percent cdr on the akali ultimate will be very important for the side of dfm particularly because uh akali doesn't tend to build any cdr herself anyway do see the stopwatch inventory means that we will get a Zonya's maybe at some point, but building towards the Andres as we speak. Very good tank killing item on the Akali. Yeah, but let's look at, I mean, look across that DFM squad. There is a lot of very powerful team fight ultimates. We talked about the perfect execution for Akali. Subjugate's, Subjugate's really yep. strong. Unleashed power for Syndra. Moonlight Vigil is very strong, of course, for the... Um, um, for the Aphelios, and of course Tarek, his ultimate is kind of known for being quite good in a team fight. It is the team fighter support ultimate in a lot of ways. Yep. And of, and of course, uh, we're hearing my producer wondering how on earth did Trundle get seventy five vision score? Is it through uh, the um, okay, zombie so wards? <laughs> Okay, so there are a couple of things. So there is Zombie Ward does count towards your um, vision score. And also, when you run Predator, you also run Ingenious Hunter, Hunter on course. the Domination Tree, which means that your item cooldowns are lower, which means that after you get certain kill participation, of which he does have three, um, he does have a decent amount there, it reduces your item cooldowns, which means that your Sweeper is on a lower cooldown. And as we can see here, there are a lot of wards to sweep out with that device. Yes, there are. 
So that's quite interesting. I don't think I quite realised yeah, that's a nice it, little interaction between it, Predator and the Ingenious Hunter, actually. It, it's, uh, it's why we used to see, like, 200 vision score and stuff like Olaf when he'd just, like, run around and take wards everywhere. Yeah, you hit the mid-game and realise you aren't actually a champion when it comes to fighting anymore and decide vision is yeah. all I do. I vision get is the key. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look yeah, at your look support. At me, look at me. I, I am, am the support, support now. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Glad we're on the same well, wavelength. Uh, synchronization is complete. Synchronicity, uh, indeed. And we'll see how this goes. Uh, Valio is heading towards the mid lane. Seros wandering towards uh, the. I'm not quite sure where Seros is wandering. Just wandering around his blue side he's, with nothing. He's, um, he's, you don't understand the mind of a of a big brain mid laner like Seros. He just does his own thing. Yeah, there's no, there's no, there's no way who, to catch. Who are we to question the might of Seros? He does Casters, have. We, that's literally what we do. True. Rightly or wrongly, is what we do. But actually, never mind that. It's another Baron start. Uh, Ebby's off to the side in this blue buff and not on vision. Has now spotted Hachimecha and uh, Ooh, just it, the making sure there. the rascals just know he's there and they have to be aware of him. Standing very still. Still, they yeah, have no idea up. he's there. The T-Rex vision of Hachimetra on this Rex side means he can't <laughs> see you if you're not moving. Uh, Ninja now two levels down on Evie and trying to throw some dice, but actually DFM has started the engage to the top side and a cog cog has been stunned, but that's a good chains of corruption from the Varus who's going to put the Tarek gold down as well. And that means that Hachimetra is running away here, but that's a disengage from DFM despite what looked like a good start. Yeah, and it's a flash uh, committed from Gang and Youthpon as well, which does give Rascal Jester the confidence to go towards his mid lane turret, although Seros uh, comes in very quickly to clear that out. Yeah, that was a uh, really good change of corruption from Art, which forced out the flash there. Didn't want to get rooted up in front of all the Rascal Jester members. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a bit of a botched Baron play from DFM. They had to use quite a lot of ultimates. Use the subjugate, use the Tarek ultimate as well, which for the life of me, I just cannot remember the name of. But um, yeah, so what this means is that they will have to reset just Push out the waves again, get a little bit of side control as we saw Cog Cog feeling free even without the teleport to go towards that bot lane. No threat of the Baron after the reset from DFM. Indeed, and we'll see how this goes. Ninja desperately trying to become relevant well, in this actually, game. Well, actually, we saw Ninja, even with this deficit, do some decent damage to Ebby off on the side of that Baron fight, and also uh, put down a lot of threat with the Miasma, the Toxic Miasma, onto Utopon, which forced him away with the Flash afterwards after he stepped out of that grounded effect. Of course, and DFM back to their Baron dancing ways, but there's still one ward from Rascal just, to, just caught in the corner there, which yeah. hasn't uh, well, been swept out. This, this is why they have to recall. There's no real pink wards in inventory. We saw Steel just back there. Get two control wards. Maybe we'll see Utopon do the same, but AD carries buying pink wards. Bah! Humbug. Doesn't happen in these games, apparently. No. Um, who would do that? Good AD carries? Well, well mm, yeah. that, that's no, that's, that, that, that's harsh. harsh. Well, it's okay, harsh. but, that, but, that, but is, that, is that your mark of a good AD carry? Well, I, now that Utopon just went back and bought himself a control ward, yes, it is. Yeah, there so we go. I'm, I'm happy right. with that. Buys okay. himself the GA as the third item, doesn't go towards the Infinity Edge, realizes that he is already strong in the damage department, just wants to make it harder to remove himself from the team fight. Cool, I've uh, discovered what the Terra Ultimate is. It's ca Cosmic Radiance is the Cosmic one. Cosmic Radiance, oh yeah, that sounds, that sounds familiar. It's been a couple uh, of seasons since yeah, I've seen Terra. Yeah, I've not seen Terra. I mean, of course, Zazel did used to pick oh, it up. Oh, we do see a bit of a collapse on Terra. Vivid Terry. is here, but uh, Ebby is a very mobile champion, and without the Miasma there to Oh no, I was wrong. Him. We saw Sona Terra last season, didn't we? We did. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we did. What a horrible time that was. Actually, we just see Art picking up the Infinity Edge on the Varus here and getting it upgraded by the Orn, going towards that item, presumably just because it is an Orn upgrade. Actually, Art will be doing good, good amount of damage with that item picked up. The DFM now at three Cloud Drakes uh, on the Soul Point. That means their ultimate cooldowns are in fact oh, non existent. Yeah, um, because, um, particularly because Seros will be on 40% CDR with um, the GLP with 20%, Phoenix Codex, and then also the Transcendence Rune as well. Alongside the 30% ultimate CDR. For the Syndra means that this Syndra ult is going to be up in just seconds. It'll I mean, probably if, be like a, a probably like a thirty second cooldown. That I means say. if team fights go kind of long, we might see double unleashed powers if they go out. Particularly if Orn is the person who's delaying the fights and trying to tank up, we could see two Syndra ults in a fight at this point. Yeah, absolutely. That's quite. Uh, Unfortunately, I do, we won't be seeing the. I don't think we'll be seeing the uh, the ultimate hunter coming out of Syndra. All right, round three fight. fight. Say DFM, ready to start this Baron dance one more time. But Rascal Jester here had to match a tunnels over the wall, trying to find his way to a place where he can contest this. Ninja is around, doesn't have blue buff though, so that's always level risk, sixteen on the Akali here yeah, as well. Very absolutely. strong. Absolutely, perfect execution is going to be a Sense very scary Syndra. ability. Ebby's gone over, has found Hatchimecha, forcing him away from the back of this pit. Steals here. There's a. Teleport now burnt again. Uh, uh, Ebby's here. Cog from... Cog 
Bert oh, teleport uh, from mid lane. That looked like the Billy mm. Boss TP, if I'm honest. Yeah, that, that, was... that TP kind of sucked. <laughs> the, the, was... the, the, the great Billy Boss TP <laughs> was... from mid lane. To, was, that, was, that, was that from uh, river to mid lane? Or was it, it was like three inches. Yeah, it was pretty bad. <laughs> it was... But that was that was a poor teleport. From yeah, Godfall. maybe not the best teleport I've ever seen. But, you know, whatever. In the name of entertainment, says Rascal Jester. As uh, the Baron fight is somehow dissuaded from that. In the name of my colour casters, mental health and despair I, over League of Legends uh, sensible choices, we'll yeah. move on from that. <laughs> yeah, um, and actually one thing which I haven't talked about yet is that Tarek is really good at taking Baron because obviously his little heal comes up every time you auto either a champion or a um, large epic creature. Alright, that's the Righteous Glory burned by the gang who's gone forward and there's the Cosmic Radiance to come down. Oh, and Ebi? the Ebby's in, he's gone back out though. But that's a good Moonlight Vigil that's come through and that's Infernum is doing some damage. But Cog Cog is so tanky. So is Vivid with the stone plate. Yeah, Art didn't find any room to auto there, but even then, Ebby still has to be forced pretty low. Uses the stopwatch as well. I'm not actually sure if he has the Zonias completed. He doesn't, so actually, he'll have to complete the Zonias, which I think he is pretty close to. But, uh,. Or what we see now is actually, you know, we look at, just look at the ult timers tick down from DFM. They definitely get the advantage compared to uh, having the perfect execution compared to something like the Chains of Corruption, which is very important from the side of Rascal Jester. That's been a couple of good disengages now from Rascal Jester. Of course, yeah. they have got quite a tanky front line, a tanky front line that has quite a lot of ways to get out of trouble between a dredge line, Bellows Breath, Col uh, Owen has his charge as well. Uh, Rek'Sai, searing charge. of course, yeah. Searing Charge, indeed. And, uh, of course, there's a tunnel there from Rek'Sai, so quite a lot of ways to stay alive, even if you do get picked. And as long as Art and Cassiopeia yeah. on, for Ninja stay kind of behind those guys, it can be quite difficult to get yeah. onto them. So who are you looking to take over the team fights in these team fights? In your opinion, as play-by-play. -play. Who, who are you looking at when you say, this is a fight brewing? Which are the shots I want to call here? Which What are the things I want to say in this team fight? It is Seros, who has hit level 16 and has that unleashed power on such a low cooldown, I think could absolutely tear apart anybody he hits at this point. And we've also got to keep an eye on whether Ebi can find his way into a backline. Physicali is very strong. I expect that if he does get into a backline, it's all well and good saying those tanky guys are staying alive for a long time. The squishy guys will not if that's an Akali on top of them with those items. Okay, and as very interesting points there, as we see DFM once again go back for probably the third or fourth Baron attempt here. Kind of hard good? to uh, lose the... Uh, yeah, doing hard to just try and secure the Baron this time. You did oh, do very yeah, well, thank Mr. Play-by-Play. Play. Oh. Anyway, Maybe uh, Baron's down to half HP and they're gonna... They're gonna uh, indeed, they're gonna back away. But Ebby's here on this turret on the bot side. So decided, you know what, we'll go for this 4-1 split push I, we were kind of talking about earlier in the game and he's just deciding, you know what, we're gonna keep baiting around Baron so Ooh, you can't rely about a good Hatchimacha stun, but as I said, the tunnel that Rek'Sai has makes it can be quite hard to stay on top of Rek'Sai. Yeah, so Scout of the Week does actually interrupt the tunnel, but obviously the the, uh, the, the Dazzle from Tarek doesn't do that. I think Evie might be able to take this turret hit. Does actually get forced off by Cog Cog though. But Steel is back here alongside the rest of DFM and the four are going to start this while the one continues to push in the bot side. Mm, of course, Cog Cog has there. no teleport. So Gang is actually the guy that keeps these guys healthy while they're taking it. And Steel is actually taking a lot of damage from this Baron. He might even die from Hatchimetra if he chooses to ult there. Well, no, couldn't find the Void Seeker to get the mark for the Void Rush. But that means uh, Rascal just to get priority in this mid lane and may well be able to take this mid lane tower as a result of some slightly odd Baron taking there. Uh, yeah, I think that Gang going out for a warding mission there meant that Steel got really low from that fight. Although, yeah, so they, actually what that means is that they take the mid out of turret. Looks like even they might be able to take good positioning for this Cloud Drake if they rush immediately for it. Ebi has the flank though. Yeah, and he just took the bot tier two, so Rascal Jester should know he's kind of around. Yep, he's caught on the vision plant there. Uh, Shuriken flips over the wall, but is now 1v4. But DFM go, you're going to go towards the Baron. Towards the Baron. And this is what we talked about earlier. You've got to make a decision. Do you stop the split push or do you help stop the Baron? The Cloud Soul is still up as well, so that's another decision they may have to decide around. They peel off of Baron yet again. Ebby going back to the split push. They're trying to play this pressure game here, but it is kind of going a bit back and forth. No real meaningful advantage come out for DFM or Rascal Jester just yet. The game's starting to stall out. But DFM now heading towards this. Cloud Drake, but I'm seeing Rascal just ahead towards Baron. So are they now the ones that are trading into yeah, this? Yeah, looks like they've Cyrus got Cassiopeia with yeah. items and mana. This could be a lot here, but Steel's behind the Drake. Uh, they have to be really careful. Utapunt going here 
Ultimates are available, unsurprisingly, with four, well, three classes. Oh, actually, they're tearing available. through that with a the Cassiopeia. They are, but Steel's here has got the uh, level uh, similarity, but the Cosmic Radiance is down. And oh, that means Invulnerable is here. And that means it is Drake Tate, the Baron taken, though, for Rascal Jester. So that's this game done. For all the time the DFM men have been trying to fight around it, it is oh, eventually Rascal Jester. But as I said, Seros Unleashed Power destroys Art. And Ninja is now stuck here. Ebby is low, doesn't want to trade his life for this. And I think Ninja's gonna be able to walk away. Okay, so at the end of that, actually, it's Rascal Jester getting out with four people with the Baron. Ciros wanted to stay on the dragon there, and actually, Ebby and Ciros teleport in just a little bit too late to decide the outcome of that Baron. Does look like they'll be able to take this uh, dragon anyway, and the uh, relevant Cloud Soul as well, the Cloud Drake. Yeah, but we saw DFM kind of dance around Baron a little bit impotently, and then Rascal Jester go, sod it! And take it. Yeah, and uh, this kind of goes back to a lot of the problems I have with LGL with 1-3-1 one one split pushing and doing 4-1. I'm trying to play the map. I think that DFM have a good comp to try and force down these objectives, land some CC onto the first person coming in, but they're not really appreciating the fact that they have a Cassiopeia and a Varus that can just tear through this Baron, and it goes down just oh so quickly. This and um, Vivid here actually gets a lot of tanking done and gets away with a very good dredge line. Art gets nuked in the pit as um, Ninja manages to flash over and eventually make his way out because does uh, Ebby gets chunked out low enough so he can't finish off that kill. And what we have now is actually a two, only two to three thousand gold lead for DFM, as opposed to the higher four to five that we saw earlier in this game. Yeah, but that means there's four Cloud Drakes, which is, well, the soul is not necessarily the most impactful. Four Cloud Drakes means, again, those ultimate cooldowns are exceptionally oh, hugely low. low. Hugely uh, low. And I still think DFM are in a decent position with their scaling. On the other side of this, though, Rascal Jester have got Baron. They have a Cassiopeia who has items very close to a death cap. We've got a Varus with an upgraded Infinity Edge and a Blade of Wrinkling and a Runan's Hurricane complete. There is ways well, for this team to to finish this game up. Yeah, so obviously the Cloud Drake gives you some flat movement speed. And when you cast your ultimate, it goes up to from 10%, which you passively gives you up to 30%, which does help the likes of Steel, who will want to be running around. And we see right, the Ornol. That's the Ornol, and that's a good chain of corruption. That's a lot of damage. But that is dead before the Cosmic Raiders. But Art is now in trouble, flashing away, but it's a good petrifying game but somehow Utapon has slain oh, Hatcha Ebby. and Ebby's now in the backline. Stopwatches, but look, Vivid's being torn down as well, and Ebby is finally gone down. Yes, but it's going to be at the cost of Ninja? Ninja has got this, but look at Utapon behind him. Seros is here as well, destroys that um, um, Cassiopeia, and Cog Cog is the running away, and look him. At, looking at this, Cog Cog runs away, <laughs> he's got a stone blade, but it means nothing, because how much healing is Gang putting out now? And look at the crescendo damage, ace for Seros, who is 6, 1, oh, and 2. Oh, and maybe Rascal Jester just got a bit too big for the breaches. Tried to go for the team fight. The Ornolt comes in, but the Cosmic Radiance is clutch. Utapon with the GA basically just buys the time of Ninja, who's trying to put out all the damage in that team fight. And actually, what we saw there was his corpse stunning Kog Kog <laughs> with the dazzle from, from, from Tarak. <laughs> so, so, like, dead men tell no tales, but they do stun your allies as now it looks like DFM will take control of this game after just removing the Baron buff from Rascal Jester and taking down the inhibitor in the mid lane too. Yeah. And all their ultimates are back up because they have four damn cloud drakes. Let's look at this replay <laughs> one more time. Rascal just decide rather than disengaging, they're going to start and engage instead. <coughs> yeah, oh, whoops. <coughs> Going. Yeah. Right. Okay, right. My Ult cast is back. Go, yeah. man. Ultimates connect, lose the fight. Yeah, good job. Nice. Um, all right, I'll talk while you recover. Yeah. Look at so Ebby getting into the back Ebby, Ebby, Ebby gets a really good dive onto Art. This Varus does have a lot of damage at this point in the game, but this is why Kali has picked so much. He can just delete AD carries from these team fights at any point in the game. Cyrus ults through onto that Cassiopeia. Real, uh, and as we see here, the Tazzle comes through from the corpse of the resurrecting Utapon there. It does connect from the Tarek as well, but it just, I don't know, it tickled me. It did. <laughs> I can see that. We can see, it's basically, it's, it's a you know, ghost <laughs> story, you know? So scary or stunned in place. Uh, nah. Sure, we'll, go with, we'll go with that. That's why. I'm, that's how I'm <laughs> justifying this. Yeah, um, and uh, after all said and done, actually, we have a lot of big items coming through. We did well, probably before that fight as well, but we hadn't checked in a while. Art has four items alongside the execution is calling as well. Very strong in this virus. But if the Tarek ult comes down, would the Righteous Glory running forwards? He really finds it hard to stand still and actually do damage and kill someone because they're obviously they're all invulnerable. And look at this flat gold graph. It was a great snowball from DFM, but then they've been they got stalled out around this Baron. Couldn't find an engage with all the disengages. And you know what? I wonder if this is because... Because 
Steel is normally the guy on the engaging champion. I honestly think the only engage that DFM has is a grab them ultimate. But actually, you want to save that right now for the damage, it seems like, yeah, on your fellows. Yeah, exactly. You it, know, the, it, the games we've seen before... Sorry, sorry to cut over, but, like, the, the Jarvan has been played twice and the Gragas has been played once. They don't have a dedicated engaged champion for Steel to play right now. Yep. There's uh, a 26-second cooldown for Cinderell. What? Oh, that's <laughs> disgusting. I mean, like, of course, <laughs> we've seen some, like, they've seen some good map pressure. We saw them draw teleports. It just hasn't resulted in the pick they need to get the kill, right? And that's just, that's just a lot of... And we're looking at Ninja, oh, Ninja here, has been caught with the bird, she's Veil is still available. But as you see, like, DFM trying to get these picks, and because they don't have super hard CC outside of a Dizzle, Dazzle and <clears throat> a good Syndra stun, it can be quite hard to keep some of these people who are face shaking down long enough for them to get a pick. Yeah, and luckily for uh, Ninja, you don't actually lose your Banshee's Veil to the Trundle Pillar there, it is a displacement. It's a bit of a weird thing, it's more like instant terrain rather than a negative debuff, although it does have a slow on it as well in the area, but it doesn't pop your Banshee's Veil either way. Utabon ticks over to 17, and they're pushing in on this top side. Ebby's in the mid lane, of course he is, pushing in that wave, and DFM decide, never mind the Baron, we're just going to take towers instead. Yeah, they managed to find themselves an opening on the map, although it does look like a, a Rascal Jester trying to just push out the mid lane, get themselves a mid lane priority, because uh, the Elder Dragon is kind Vivid's of being caught behind us, and now he's in so much trouble. Look how much damage that Scatter the Weak did. Oh, Vivid's got so much, but Ninja is still alive, taking damage onto oh. Steel, but that's a call to, call to the Forge Gold that goes super wide. Ninja takes a lot of damage from a W, so much damage from that percent health off the W for Syndra. Okay, well, Ninja was alive because no damage happened to him, but this does buy DFM the chunk that they want to use to start Baron. They have, and it's going down so Ooh. quickly. Look at Utapon throwing damage out there in that pit. Gang's there healing people. Steel's not going to take any damage anymore. This time round, it's a clean Baron take. None of the earlier mistakes. Elder Drake spawns in two, one, and they're on it, and Hachimecha are so thinking Baron's about taken. it. Baron is taken, Elder is alive, but the Rascal Jester are not there for the timing window to take this. They are not, they're looking to try and take the Skull Crab as well, but Steel is here, running into it, but Ninja does a lot of damage on this Cassiopeia oh, now. Oh, that's some damage, yeah. Ninja really chunking out Trundle just before the start of this fight. Trundle does have a lot of sustain in his kit, but he doesn't have anything like a GA to keep himself alive if he's burst out. But Subjugate is available, and we've talked about how good that is versus tanks. Okay, now we see Rascal Jester actually in a pretty good position for an Orn ult here. That's a very good corridor, but of course the Orn ult is down, so they can't fight with an objective. Oh, it looks like... Whoa, whoa, Cirrus is teleporting into the base. So Double is teleport. Ellie. We're going to see that. And all the while they were taking the Baron, that mid lane inhibitor had gone down, and we're looking there trying to end it. They're going to stop the back. They're going Ninja's for the back the door. Back. Ninja's in here, but look at this. They're going to try to stop the people, but uh, that's the... the uh, Double turrets are gone down. They're Cassie's both down, back. and Cassio has gone back, but it's still 2v1, and those are really strong carries. Can they even fight that? It's 2v1. It's going to be Ninja's close. He misses the petrifying gaze, and that's a good stopwatch, and every kill dead. She's gone! That look at the Hatchimetra's back, but look, Ebi's just gonna kill it, and that's GG! GG to DFM with the crazy base race! Decide, screw your Elder Dragon, we're taking the game instead! How? Well, teleports. Teleports, damage, what? late uh, game macro, and a fantastic ending to that game. Lexi, Mass Swan, take, take the reins! I can't talk more about this. That was... <laughs> I'll be honest, the, the surprising end. That was a game of so much poising, so many team fights, at four air drakes with an air um, uh, like emblem or whatever. Like uh, the cloud soul, yeah. Cloud soul, soul, that's it. I was like, emblem soul, not sure. Like, oh my god, these were players who wanted to try and have the team fight. DFM, not with the team fight comp, goes halfway through and just goes, all right, guys, this has been a 35 minute game or almost 40 minute game. It's gone on for long enough. We're going to take the Baron. We're going to win the game. We're going to do our own ex -peque, but there's going to be two of us TPing. <laughs> you guys stop the backs. You guys can have Elder Drake. We're, we're, that's fine. We're going to end. Yeah. Wow. That kind of shot calling from DFM. If they can do that like throughout a whole game, making these kind of big yeah. decisive decisions, because that's what that was. That was a decisive decision by the whole oh, team. Oh yeah, absolutely, just committed, committed to it. Yeah. yeah, fully committed, everyone. You did. You saw all of them do, like both Cyrus and Evie TP'd at the exact same time. Yeah. And, and then the rest the of the team were like, no, we're gonna stop any backs from happening. Massively, and that is the power of a team that has been playing together for so long who have got brought in a coach. This is where, at the beginning of a season, when mm. teams haven't got the synergy, those kind of calls, the ability to make them, gives you a massive, undefinable edge. And we just saw it at the end there. Great so, stuff to finish that up. Obviously, we occasionally like to do good cop, bad cop. You guys have been very praising of DFM right now. And it's it has been a fantastic <laughs> and very exciting end to the game. 
I'm going to be bad cop. Their Baron play sucked. You cannot play for that long around Barons and actually give up a Baron and let them get out with four people. Four people to then push uh, push themselves out, stall out the game with a Cassiopeia and a Varus, some of the better DPS champions in the late game, and expect it to be ended cleanly. It required some excellent higher level decision making to end that game, but you should never be in that position with the leads you have on something like your Akali. They did not play around pressure well that game, although they, I do congratulate them for the great ending to that game. If I could interject there as well, I think part of it, as we were talking about, was the fact that DFM didn't really have the hard CC out of a Dazzle and a uh, CC lock from Syndra with the stun, but it basically meant that with the the tanks that Rascal Jester had drafted to face Jake had a lot of ways out of those trouble, uh, out of the trouble, right? So you'd stun them briefly and then they es escape. So they couldn't get the pick to finish up the Baron. That made things really difficult for a long time for DFM. It was definitely a back and forth game and Rascal Jester definitely performed in a showing up. That is why yeah. it was not I was only... very impressed by Ninja and Art. I think mm. that they managed to be pretty good backliners there. And that was why it was the LJL officials or the the, uh, the Riot official streams game of the day. And it will also be our game of the day game of that week for week <laughs> two. It was an incredible performance. Very back and forth. And Rascal Jester definitely said, we've got something to prove. We're not going down without a fight. We don't care that you're the favorites going into this. We're here with a statement. And we'll be hearing from them in the next game of week two. Two, and that's going to be the Fukuoka SoftBank Hawks Gaming versus Rascal Jester. Now, Fukuoka are also one and one going into this week, same as Rascal Jester. Let's see what happens with these teams. It's going to be very much an interesting matchup, but we will find out right after this break. We'll catch you very shortly. <laughs> 